Hey everybody, Thomas here. Okay, I want to go over just a few things on this sawmill. <clears throat> and after that, I'll do another video where I'm actually be cutting up this pine log right here. This pine log is 16 foot long, excuse me, 16 three, 19 inches at the fat end, which is near the sawmill head, and then 17 inches on this end. So it doesn't really taper down much over the full length. <clears throat> um, all right, so just go over a few features. So the log itself, which I'll show in the next video, is actually on the loader. Uh, these loader arms, they will lift up the logs. Also, uh, which I'm really good at doing this because I'm still learning, um, the black bar right there, you can actually, if you have a log on here, you can pop a log off. It, it's a neat little feature. I'll see if I can show you it. Um, I accidentally do it every once in a while, which is a pain. The, uh, the log deck, it's super stout. I mean, you don't get much stouter than this. Uh, it actually has, that's like half inch thick steel right there that, that, that it rides on. These rails are solid. The, let's see if I can turn it back. The, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the bunks themselves, that's quarter inch thick steel. It's got the stainless steel uh, bed plates on there. If you ever have a sawmill, this is a must have. Um, it will stain your wood in no time if you don't. Uh, if you look at these vertical log stops, that's a, those are awesome. The tow boards, I didn't think I'd use them as much as I do use them, but on this log right here, uh, I actually have it a little bit too close to the head. So what I'm probably going to do is once I get it onto the mill, now they're up right now, I'll actually probably lift it up and then use those tow boards to, to push it forward, which is a pretty neat option. The log turner, it's a beast. I mean, absolute beast. Uh, it'll throw, turn a log around like it's, you know, just a toy. The log dog on this side, only one single log dog, and it works phenomenally well. Up and down, in and out, uh, it'll, again, throw a log up against those log stops like it's nothing. Uh, there was a question asked the other day on uh, one of the Facebook groups I'm with, and they were asking, what are these four plates in the back here? Well, there's a few reasons those are there the main reason is for the drag back system so on the mill it has the drag back bars these right here these little fingers now i'm not going to show it right here i'll do another video at some point but this bar all you do is you pull this bar out when you want to use this and uh you hit drag back on the computer which i'll show you that so this button right here is your drag back um, instead of having to do, so you set your turn, uh, above the log. If you're doing, um, you know, multi-dimensional cuts and you go auto up and it clears the log. Well, if you want to take those boards off each time, instead of doing auto up, you hit drag back. And by doing drag back, it goes up where the blade is above the height of the wood. However, the fingers there will still catch the wood. And then you can use the hydraulics on the on the uh, sawmill to bring it back. Now this head here does uh, sway left or right, so you just move it off to one side. And it's really good if you don't have uh, uh, somebody working with you, if you're kind of doing a job by yourself. So pretty cool. I'll go into the computer in just a second. But um, another cool feature. So the guide roller is pretty cool. This is the, about the only thing that has an electric motor on here with the exception of the uh, starter. Check this out. So while you're cutting it and everything, you can, uh, you know, adjust how wide your, your rollers are, which is very handy. Very, very handy. Um, oh, another thing that I did is I removed the thing that does this the whole time when you're at idle. Now, when you're at full throttle, this sucker's up, no problem. But at idle, it just sits there and just drives me nuts. So went ahead and took that off. All right, so let's go ahead and, uh, oh, let's see what else I have on this side. Uh, a good thing to do is you've got to keep your energy chain clean. Uh, I went ahead and used my blower uh, to blow it out and everything. Uh, keep those hydraulic lines from building up sawdust and all that good stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and crank her up, and you'll see how much quieter she is. And I'll show you a few things on here and show you some control. So she's already warmed up. But if she wasn't warmed up, you could hit this uh, glow plug light right here. And as you can see, I've only got 7.7 .7 hours on it. 
She ain't even broke in yet. Oh, it's so sweet, it's so quiet now. So that is at, sorry, I moved the camera all over the place. That is at um, idle. Down here, you have your throttle. So if I just bump that up, that's full throttle. So there's only like two settings on this one. The throttle, you got this little solenoid right there. That little arm, as you can see, it has a very short throw. And I believe that's part of the, uh, the engine detuning, and I say detuning, uh, so that they can run a larger engine and not have to worry about the diesel particulate filter. So this is only a 25 horsepower uh, Kubota four cylinder diesel. Now this diesel is actually uh, more than like a Cassie quick. This diesel is more like a, uh, a 30 ish, I don't know, 38, 30 something, but it's four cylinder diesel. They limit the RPM and then they uh, allow you to stay under that 25 horsepower mark but this thing has almost a hundred foot pounds of torque which is ridiculous oh it's so awesome okay let's show you some of these uh, functions on here now you're supposed to be at full throttle uh, when you're doing this however just for the video sakes I'm gonna go nice and slow so you have your this little speed control thing over here this right here is your head, forward, and back. Now, it's not moving right now because I've got the speed controller set down to slow. But anyways, as you're cutting through the log, you'll have this press forward, and you, with your other hand, you can kind of control the speed. Now, I have some bad habits. I will actually feather this knob right here, or lever. Like you see, this is what lets your saw head go forward and back. All right, so let me move it down a little bit further so it's not quite as loud. Uh, right about there. Okay, second lever. This lever right here controls your vertical log stops. So as you can see, they go all the way down to where you have just those red stops. And again, they go all the way up. Whenever you get a log off, always remember set those suckers back up because there's nothing more irritating that you don't have that okay then you have your tow boards so your front tow board is on your left hand control your back or your rear tow board is on your uh, right hand control so all you do on these tow boards so you i can only do one at a time to the camera you can see that one going down and you hear it like kind of throttle the hydraulic pump that's when you know it's it's set let me go move this one down too. And again, they have uh, those rollers on there, which is really a really cool thing. Um, your log spike up and down. So there's log spike going up, which is controlled on your left hand side here. And on the other side, on your right hand side, is the in and out. So by in and out, it goes in and out. And it's very, very powerful. So pretty cool. I like to uh, keep that down uh, whenever I'm um, loading a log. You don't want to overload that, but it, you know. And then here's the really cool one. I can do this one with both hands or one hand right here. What it is is this is your log turner up and down and your log turner chain mover, chain, yeah, directional. So I'll go ahead and bring it up first. You can see the log turner starting to come up. All right, and then now you can see it moving. So there's one direction and there's another direction. So you, you can go bi-directional just by moving your levers back and forth. And then last but not least is the log loader. Now I'm not gonna actually use, well, excuse me, there's one more after this. I'm not gonna use a log loader right now because I've got a log right there. I'll show that in a video. Uh, but what I'll do show you is, sorry, get the other, there we go. The head up and down. Head up and down is controlled on your far right. So forward and back, far left, head up and down, far right. Now something cool on this machine, so here, let me just go to a random height. So I'm at 20 inches and three quarters. Now that keeps on having a little bit of variation, 
because there's a very thin piano wire up there and just from the vibration you'll get a little bit of movement in there but so say I'm cutting into a log uh, first off let me show you what we got here so you have your presets set up so I have inch inch and a half two four and six uh, that's kind of like what I like to run mostly I'm running the inch and a half type stuff so <clears throat> Once you have your, your log on there, you're, you're trying to get your first cut, but you're gonna do multiple repeating cuts. You take your blade height where it's going to clear the log, and you hit set return. Your set return, so you'll see on the screen, set return, it's already been set. So I'll auto saw, which means I'm doing an inch and a half thickness. My first time I hit that down, I have it set up where it's measuring from the top down. Measuring from the top down means that my top board will be a throwaway board. It will make sure that that, you know, I get to an inch and a half uh, spacing, taking into consideration the curve of the blade. And every time I go through the log, all I do is go auto up, so it goes back up to where uh, my set return was. I bring the head back, then I hit auto saw down again. And now, instead of doing an inch and a half, it goes down essentially three inches. And then for every time I do this, You'll see the head move. There's another one. It's going down an inch and a half, plus whatever the thickness of the uh, the blade is. Pretty neat. Again, that's if I'm leaving the wood on the mill itself. If I was going to be bringing the logs back each time, I would hit the drag back. So I just hit auto saw. I would hit drag back. It only goes up a slight amount, and then I would be able to bring the head back and everything. Uh, so I, I would clear the log with my blade and you know have it back there so pretty cool and this does stay on uh if you don't hit the switch right here so make sure you turn it off because it'll drain your battery it will take a long time but it's a possibility so that's the rundown of the controls on the the timber king 2000 again i've only had this mill for uh a week yeah i've had it for almost exactly a week um, I've gone through almost one tank of fuel. Excuse me. I take that back. I haven't even gone through a tank of fuel. This is about how much fuel came with the mill. Then I added fuel at my dad's house up to about right here. The mill came to me with just over an hour on it. So that's how much fuel I've spent. Now, I, I may have added twice to it, but I didn't go to a full tank. Anyways, long story short, I'm expecting this to last me 8 to 10 hours, which is pretty impressive. Um, very fuel efficient, a lot of torque. It's pretty quiet, uh, because it does have that large flywheel in the front there and it does have that massive amount of torque. So, you know, they do a great job by putting a, a Kubota on here. Industrial Kubota is just a beast. So if you have any questions or comments, you know, feel free to put them in there. Uh, I will have more videos coming out, uh, where I'm going to show, uh, turning, so loading a log, turning a log, and uh, cutting it up and everything. So, yep, hopefully uh, you're all enjoying this. And if you're looking at uh, Timber King sawmills, you know, this one is about, I mean, this is, I kid you not, this is a commercial mill. If you're starting a business, this is a mill to get. Now, I'm kind of like a hobbyist amateur. Uh, I like to cut wood, and, and eventually I'm going to build my house. And this is the mill I'm going to build my house with. It will handle... Just about anything I want. I can do 35 inches uh, between the rollers. I've got a 16 inch uh, throat there from the blade height to the top. And then I can cut 20 foot long. There's really, based on the house plans that I'm throwing together, I don't really need anything longer than 20 foot. But if need be, um, we can uh, get an extension on this. I just I just don't see what I would need it for. Because this, uh, this is literally the machine. I mean, you'll have this machine for forever. I'm... I don't see myself going bigger, but, you know, I didn't see myself going bigger from the 1400 uh, in an early, as early as I did. Um, the 1400 is a great mill, but, you know, I, I have some uh, jobs that I've taken on where I was struggling. This will make my productivity a lot faster. And again, I do this on the side. This is something for fun. Uh, and a lot of my friends, they know that I've got a sawmill and uh, they, I cut wood for them. <laughs> we do a lot of bartering in return and uh, it, it's all good. But uh, I hope you all have enjoyed this. I know, another long video. I need to really do a short video, but there's a lot to say about this mill. There will be more said about this mill, but I just want to put 
some information out there for anyone looking at a Timber King 2000. It's a fantastic mill and a diesel upgrade. In my opinion, yes, it is a very steep price, but it will pay for itself in reliability and maintainability and, you know, torque, power, and fuel consumption. I mean, it's a diesel. Everything I own is a diesel, so I love it. All right, y'all uh, stay safe sawing out there, and uh, we'll see you around. Thanks. Bye.